hey what's up everyone welcome to brand new video series on red team um, operations for those who are returning to my channel um, one of my previous series of videos i did was on how to build your red team um, lab environment where you can actually practice some of these techniques um, that we'll be discussing in this series of videos right so if you if you are a new person welcome to this channel and um, don't forget to subscribe and also set yourself a reminder right so this is actually going to be the key concept that we'll be talking about and also demonstrate them as some of the techniques that you can use so i have seen or use on my red team engagements right now this is not an exhaustive list of them there's a whole bunch of things that you can use or apply in red teaming but um this is just a few of them um, as time goes on i'll keep building upon these lists i didn't have enough space to put them you know so that's why i have this small list here so um eventually we'll keep adding some of these things as as they come along again i want this lab to be a living document so any technique that comes up i'll just drop it in the series you know in a video series right so for starters this will be some things i will be looking into not in any particular order but as time goes on you know we'll apply them and you know showcase how they can be executed in um, real world red team operation now for those who follow some of my videos or were able to follow my series um, the other time we actually had an active directory environment we built for our lab and it's just something very basic and small but at the same time it conceptualizes what you typically come across when you know you execute any red team operation so our techniques that we're going to be um, showcasing are going to focus on this typical ad environment where you have a child domain you have a forest and an external forest as well right one of the um, ingredients in having effective red team operation is having a c2 or command and control infrastructure setup right now for this particular one um, some of the techniques may not require us to use any tool at all but for the sake of those who may want to understand how to set up or utilize c2 infrastructure in red team operation we are going to use covenant for demonstration purposes now we are not going to dig deep into how to use covenant if you want something like that um, leave a comment and i can do a whole video um, tutorial on how to set up and use um, you know covenant but in this video i'll just do a quick demonstration on how to install it and then have it running and we may use it in addition to other tools uh, you know to execute the um, red team techniques right I would also leave uh, a link within the description for where you can find a list of you know C2 uh, you know uh, you know frameworks because um, there are a whole bunch of them we have the paid and then we have the open source the one of the paid one of one of the well-known paid C2 uh, you know framework is Cobalt Strike right um, it comes with a hefty amount of money, but it's a very, very good tool that is well known in the industry. Um, Covenant is basically, you know, essentially replacing Empire because a partial Empire is no longer in maintenance. As far as I can, you know, tell, um, I know um, if I'm wrong, please somebody correct me. But um, Covenant, which is also based on, you know, .NET framework is also picking up gradually and um, it's becoming one of the, it's becoming the replacement for Empire basically. So I felt like that would be a very good tool for us to, uh, you know, to set up and then help, uh, uh, you know, execute some of these techniques, right? So let's go ahead and then begin um, the demonstration on how to install the Covenant. All right, so Covenant can be installed on um, either Linux distribution, especially Kali Linux or Windows environment. Um, in this case, we are going to install the Covenant on our Kali Linux, and then I'll demonstrate how we can access it through a Windows machine. So the assumption is, you know, um, we had compromised um, a user you know, system, and that is where we're going to use that as an established foothold to execute the rest of our operations, right? So within, um, I have my Kali up and running. So within Kali, um, I first want to actually see my IP address, uh, my interface 
uh, so 172.100.2.203 right now some few things we need to make sure that we have them um you know up and running on on uh, for covenant to function you know properly is we need to install covenant i mean i'm sorry dot net <coughs> right and i'll provide a link in the description on where you can have access to and then also you know of course install covenant it's very very simple so let's go ahead and um, have such uh, a requirement let me install the net on the kali box and actually let me switch over to so i am using wget to download the dot net uh, from microsoft website right hit enter and that is downloaded okay and let's install it now if you look at covenant on github they have a very specific version of net you have to install to be compatible with covenant and i think it's 3.3.10 um, um, to get it working right so once that is done let me just do a quick update to make sure that my software is up to date okay so now that we have the um, .NET package installed um, on our Linux now we are actually going to install the version of the .NET um, SDK on our Kali and if you can see I'm actually specifying the .NET dash sdk dash three dot one which is the version that you need for covenant to work um, i think if you go anything higher you may have some issues getting um, covenant to work properly so now that you have everything uh, you know set up i'll just hit enter and that is going to install the dot net sdk three dot one package on my kali box so I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back. All right, so .NET is installed. Now we can go ahead and actually install and um, clone the Covenant repository on our box and then get it up and running. So this is where you clone. Make sure that you have the dash dash recurse dash sub modules um, you know added to your clone um, command so that is going to clone the entire covenant in our box and then once that is done we'll change directory into covenant oops let me make sure that i have it okay covenant and then another covenant so we'll just do twice right so make sure that you change into covenant twice okay all right so this is everything that we have here now that we have is as simple as typing okay let me get it, let me get the ip address because we are going to open this once i get it up and running we are going to open it on our windows machine so it's just a matter of just typing dot net and then run and so hit dot net run now this is going to take depending on your machine's power it is going to take some time to get everything up and running so let me pause the video and then wait until this is all done all right so once you get everything up and running you get this right here saying open um, this in your browser now because we are going to open this on a different machine which is a windows machine we are going to need the ip address which is 172.100.2.3 and then dot um dot two dot 203 and then um, the i am um, the port number is going to be on 7443 all right so let me bring up um, the windows machine and then uh, let's try to open it up all right so now i am on a windows machine which um, based on our assumption we have compromised this machine and um, we are logged in as this user who is um a domain user of the gh.afro.wtf I mean, dot local right the first time you you know you have you know, the, the first time you get your app um, your covenant up and running you would have to create a username so let me create a username fluffy 
and then register. And this is how uh, you know cabinet looks like, right? Um, now, of course, again, like I said, this is not going to be a video tutorial on how to use Covenant, but let's do a very quick setup before we can even get Covenant up and running. Uh, we need to set up what we call a listener, right? So a listener is where we have a connection coming back from our compromised machine through, um, you know, launcher and stuff like that. So all these, these are all options that we are going to explore in the course of this, uh, uh, you know, video series. We may not use all of them. Like I said, some of the things that we'll be doing, you know, we could just use the machines, um, the Windows machines built in utility itself without using any external tool. But we just wanted to have this as an, um, as, um, as an add on or something to fall back on if we have to. So we need to create a listener. And it's very, very simple. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to provide the IP address here. 172. All right, so here it is. And also, I have two interfaces on this box. I'm on the Kali box. So I have to specify where I want it to listen to, which is going to be this one, because I have an external IP address. And sometimes this would create confusion if you try to do anything um, for um, a callback, right? So I hit create, and that is going to create a new. Uh, listener for us right so I am going to end the video here for the first video series on this red team um, active directory red team tactics techniques and procedure and then so that you know in our next video we'll begin to actually use the full functions of um, uh, you know well in the next video we are going to tackle um, each technique per video series all right so thank you for watching again like i said um, if you haven't i would encourage you to subscribe to the channel and then also hit and hit the reminder so that each time that i drop a new video you'll be the first person to see the video thank you so much and you have a nice day bye bye